even though it, it would hurt her so much. She went in Spanish, you know, she yelled her guts out. Oscar de la Hoya of the United States. Oscar triumphed on the world stage. But when they returned to Los Angeles, Cecilia became gravely ill and needed to be hospitalized. I remember walking up and for the very first time, I see my father with a tear in his eye. Oscar was very attached to his mother, very attached. His mother had a sweet spot in her heart for him. She had this ring on that I gave her from the uh, National Golden Gloves. She had taken it off, she had it in her hand. And uh, she had told me right there and then, I want you to go and do this, uh, to go win the gold medal. Maybe about half an hour later, she had passed away. His mother's death left Oscar depressed and confused. When my mother passed away, I, I decided it's over. No more boxing. As time passed, his mother's dreams would provide inspiration to Oscar. One day I said to myself, um, you know, if my mother was alive, she would want me to, to continue on and, and go for the dream. You know, and, and she did tell me to go and do it. With the Olympic trials right around the corner, Oscar faced the first obstacle to fulfilling his mother's dream. There was this kid named Mark Ruda, who in early 1991 beat me in the world championships in Australia. The only kid to beat me in the last eight years of my amateur career. It was obviously a big, devastating blow for him because he hadn't lost in such a long time. Oscar rebounded from the loss and would soon be named to represent the United States at the Olympic Games in Barcelona. Now I had five fights. Five fights uh, away from my dream, from my mother's dream. After cruising through the qualifying matches, Oscar met Korean Sung Sik Hong in the quarterfinals. They called him the octopus. Look at the Korean fighter hole. The Korean fighter was fouling a lot, and they weren't calling the fouls. I'm saying to myself, it's over. All of a sudden, the referee stops the action and takes away two points from the Korean kid. The bell rings, and I win. I was like, my gosh, this, this was meant to be. This is, this is my destiny. Oscar was one win away from the gold medal when his final foe was revealed, Marco Rudolph, the only fighter to have beaten him in years. I said, my gosh, it, it, it just cannot be true. The only kid who beat me in the last eight years, I'm facing him now for the gold medal. I was petrified. But then again, I was still I was on a mission. He had a motivation, which was, unfortunately, his mother's death. The third and final round, I hit him with my eyes closed and dropped him. Oscar had delivered his mother's dying wish, and he dedicated the gold medal to her. It was the saddest and the happiest moment of my life. I just, I couldn't believe it, you know, that actually he won the gold medal. He actually accomplished that dream. When Oscar returned, the streets of East L.A. were packed to greet their hometown hero. When Oscar first got back, it was, it was amazing. The whole time, the whole week, I mean, it was just a big party, big parade. But before he could enjoy the celebration, Oscar had somewhere he needed to go. I remember going to the to the grave, laying down the gold medal. You know, Mom, here it is. Spending hours and hours there with her. I fulfilled her dream. That's all she wanted. That's it, it's over. But then I said to myself, well, let me let me fulfill one of my personal goals. With Olympic gold on his resume, Oscar was ready to fight professionally. With his father looking over his shoulder, Oscar signed with the management team of Robert Middleman and Steve Nelson, who offered the De La Hoyas a $1 million signing bonus. I knew it, it would come down to dollars and cents with Joe. The most influential person, as far as Oscar is concerned, is Joel Sr. His new managers presented Oscar and Joel with a plan, a grueling schedule of fights leading up to a title fight within a year. 
Oscar was happy to oblige. Usually I would give him a five minute description of the guy. He trusted me. He wanted to get to the top as soon as possible. He fought 10 opponents in 11 months and he beat them all. It was hectic. It was work and he accomplished it. But a punch thrown by Narcisco Valenzuela almost derailed the plan. When I first got knocked down, I thought it was over for me. I thought my whole career was over. He hadn't been knocked down in eight years. There was no way he was going to stay down that way. He sprung up, you know, right away and came back and finished him off in the same round. Valenzuela is through! Back on track, Oscar faced Danish fighter Jimmy Bredahl for his first title and defeated him in 10 rounds. Four months later, he knocked out Jorge Paez for his second title belt. He's not a very patient person. When he wants things, he wants them now. Outside the ring, I can be this nice guy, very easygoing, but get me inside that ring, and I turn into this animal. With two championship belts, Oscar's future looked extremely bright. He signed a five-fight, $7.5 million deal with HBO. He was boxing's newest superstar. People call me the golden boy. They say that everything I touch turns to gold. Oscar has appeal because of the way he looks, the way he speaks, and the way he fights. But boxing fans weren't the only people noticing Oscar De La Hoya. He's attracted more women fans uh, than any other fighter that, in history. You have all these women just going crazy. And the poor kid from East L.A. had another problem to handle. Money. It, it was as if I could do anything I want now because I had money. They went through it as fast as they got it. And Oscar, you know, just bought a lot of clothes and uh, cars were Oscar's thing, always cars. But fame and fortune were only a prelude to the biggest fight of his life. And the blood bothering Julio as De La Hoya lands a vicious left hook. When I saw him across that ring and he was just covered with blood, I was like, my gosh, I did this to you? Chavez's bloody mask simply too grotesque. title belts. It's been a, a crazy ride. Whatever he sets his mind to, he can do. The Golden Boy's success was also turning into a curse. I just didn't know who was there. When I started winning fights, when I started getting money, who was there to love me, you know? I was confused. But while the money rolled in, it disappeared just as quickly. I just started spending it like crazy. And after about eight months, I realized I only had like a few, several thousand dollars in, in the bank. Oscar decided it was time for a change. He replaced his father as his business advisor and fired his managers. I opened my eyes and I just thought that they weren't doing the right thing for me. I wanted to be in control. I am in control now. Oscar put his career in the more seasoned hands of Bob Arum and immediately saw his opponents and purses improve. His first fight with his new team was against Rafael Ruelas another East Los Angeles product. The breakthrough fight for Oscar was the Ruelas fight. Well, I captured the whole Latino audience. The fight was stopped in the second round. Oscar De La Hoya has stopped all the trash talk. Oscar now owned three title belts and an 18-0 professional record. But his biggest fight was still ahead of him. Julio Cesar Chavez. His fight against Chavez was his true coming out fight. Chavez was a revered hero in his native Mexico. For Oscar, the American son of Mexican immigrants, Chavez stood on a pedestal. He was the icon that all Hispanic fighters looked up to. In 100-degree Las Vegas heat, 
the golden boy stepped into the ring for the biggest fight of his life. Oscar De La Hoya, the night that he fought Julio Cesar Chavez was a great fight machine.